Welcome to Sports News. I'm Noah Jaffe, along with my partner, Caden Vincent. Let's start with the Phillies. It's the first game of a three-game series between the Braves and the Phils. In the bottom of the first, Freddie Galvis steals third with a wild throw, allows him to go home and score. 1-0, Phils. Now in, and there's Kurt Suzuki, very upset about the throw. Now in the bottom of the fifth, Aaron Altair hits a two upper decker shot, one of the longest home runs in Philadelphia Phillies uh, season this star, uh, and Julio Tehran very upset about giving him a fastball on a 2-0 pitch. And here's Cameron Ruff. He says, I can do that too because look at this shot right down the middle into the stands. He's trying to keep that spot for the 2018 season. Now, and this is the funniest part because it ain't 2016 anymore. There's no more dabbing, but apparently Perkins thinks so. Now, in the bo now staying in the bottom of the fifth, one-on-one -on -one out for Freddie Galvis. Galvis lines a ball to Nick Markagas, who's won four gold gloves while showing why he doesn't. He has four, but not showing why he has it there. As Miss playing the ball, one run scores, and now Galvis scores on the wild throw. Philadelphia wins easily, 10-3. to And let's go on to football as the biggest sporting event in the world in uh, Houston, Super Bowl 51 between the Patriots and the Falcons. First play of the game, Devontae Freeman. Look at this run, 50 yards. Look at that. He's just juking the players all around. But it's short-lived, though, because the Patriots do get the ball. Because later, LeGarrette Blunt, he is a Philadelphia Eagle probably because of this. He has it, and, yeah, he fumbles it. And Bill Belichick doesn't like fumbles, especially in Super Bowl 51. And Robert Alford was the one who recovered it. He would, he would be talked about later in this game. And here you could clearly see the Atlanta Falcons uh, turning it over, or the Patriots turning it over, and now they have the, the Falcons. And look the at this, Matt, Matt Ryan throwing it to Julio Jones. And look at that. He, he, he's a good receiver, but he's also very strong too because he just ripped the ball. And that's why he's one of the best receivers in the game. Now first, uh, second and goal, and Matt Ryan hands it off to Devontae Freeman, and he's happy, touchdown Falcons, and he looked like Michael Phelps diving in the end zone. And here's Matt Ryan, and he throws it over to Hooper. Austin Hooper, another great play, and Tom Brady throwing it, and an interception. You think he's the best player in the league, but he's really not, and that is uh, – Devontae, no, that's not Devontae. That's that all. is, that's the um, guy that we were talking about, Robert Alford with the pick six showboating. All right, now the Patriots have the ball once again. Tom Brady saying, no, I'm going to win this. Well, at least a little bit here. Finding James White, he would have a big game. You would hear him much later to come. About a 25-yard gain on that play, and it would set up, it would set up Rob Gatowski with 20 postseason and he would make it 21 as the kick is up, and it is true, making it 21-3 to at the break. And here you can see um, Malcolm Butler getting juked out. Looked like Allen Iverson and Tyron Lue there. All right, Tevin Coleman pitching it, or getting from Matty Ice, throwing it, touchdown. It's 28-3. to it's over. Turn off the TVs, popcorn, Coke, put it away. But that's not all because look at Tom Brady running. Look at that 39-year-old man just slide. I mean, I can't believe he can even do that now. He looked like a 20-year-old sliding there. All right, now first and goal for the Patriots. And Tom Brady finds, huh, familiar name, James White for the four-yard touchdown. It's all of a sudden a 28-10 to ball game. The Patriots would get a safety after that. Here's Matt Ryan. Snap the ball. He's running back, and he th and he gets sacked too. So and that was sacked by uh, Dante. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Later in that drive, the Patriots have it third down and short, but uh, Tom Brady cools off and is settled with a touchdown. They would go for two, and Tom Brady using his smart brain here as he pitch he doesn't actually pitch it. It's a wildcat play, handing it off to James White for the two-point conversion. All of a sudden, we got a ball game. Matt Ryan 
running. He's trying to he's trying to find and he finds Julio J- Julio Jones, and that's an amazing catch. But he they think it's out of bounds. They're gonna replay it, see if it is out of bounds. But it's in. Look at him get the two feet down, and he is in there. Howie and Ward definitely wanted a foul. Who or not in play? Julio Jones obviously wanted a fair play. An amazing catch. Best catch in Super Bowl history, right? Well, maybe not because Tom Brady finds Julian Edelman with one of the greatest catches in Super Bowl history, having four defenders right on him and somehow colliding that. That's like me wanting the last muffin with my other brothers. Just a tremendous job of keeping control of the ball. Clearly, it does not touch the ground. This was one of the biggest plays in the game. And here's another angle, the slow-mo vision, as you can clearly see, catching the ball. Second and goal for the Patriots, and you can see the um – I can't forget his name. (laughs) James White (laughs) pumped up after that touchdown. Now Tom Brady sets and he snaps it and finds Danny Amendola with the touch, with the actually the two-point conversion. And now we got a tie ball game. Of course, the Patriots win the coin toss. And now they win the Super Bowl. Here's this play. And, of course, it's James White getting a pitch from Tom Brady and just stretching it for his whole life. Running it, the Patriots have won the Super Bowl. New England, you can put another ring on it. No, 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 put a ring on it. Yes, Tom Brady can put a ring on it with his Super Bowl is in his effect now. Now, m- moving on to s- the base to some more news. The MLB, Houston Astros, and Los Angeles Dodgers the hottest teams in baseball, no question about it. The Los Angeles Dodgers just got Texas ace U Darvish from the Texas Rangers, and the Dodgers are 74 and 31. And the Houston Astros just got their 69th win, winning it 14 to 7 last night, and adding Francisco Lariano to their starting lineup. In other news, Carmelo Anthony is keeping a low profile on where he wants to go. He's either decided between New York, um, between Houston and the, and Cleveland Cavaliers, but either way, wherever he goes, he'll always be a dominant force. He said he didn't want to stay in New York. All right, that's all the time we have. I'm Kate Vincent with uh, my partner. I'm Noah Jaffe. Saying good night. Thank you. Welcome, I'm Noah Jaffe, and welcome to Oracle Arena. The crowd here is loud, and I'm alongside Caden Vincent. It's an exciting game one of the NBA Finals of 2017. The Warriors are trying to take that crown back, and the Cavaliers are trying to go back to back. And it's tip-off. The exciting two weeks have already started. Steph Curry with the ball. Steph Curry down to Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant with the ball, Kevin over to Zaza and Clay Thompson with the ball. Draymond Green shoots and he misses. And I think that uh, the finals this year is going to be very interesting to watch because uh, I think it's going to be settled by who's going to be who's going to be beaten on the rebounds and who's going to get the more boards because you could clearly see the Cavaliers and Warriors are both fighting there. Yeah, I definitely agree. Plus, with the addition of Kevin Durant, I think that the Warriors do have a bit of an advantage, but. Uh, it always could change. Uh, basketball is a very tricky game, and everything could go wrong in one second. And Ch- Tristan Thompson looks like it has the ball. That's Kevin Love. Kevin Love, I'm sorry. Kevin Love. And a turnover. And that's just Terrible. amazing defense by Clay Thompson. Right. All over his grill, all over him, giving him no room at all to uh, shoot, and a contested shot, good defense by Clay Thompson. Steph Curry with the ball. And the Warriors were actually ranked second in defense. And Draymond Green, he's probably Steph Curry with the shot. And people always think that Steph Curry makes every shot because he is a good shooter. But, you know, once in a while he will miss a shot. Yeah, I mean, you could clearly see his stats from the previous finals in 2015 and right. 2016. They've definitely gone down completely. And 20, and um, but in the regular season, two-time MVP unanimous last year. But um, we'll see how this year goes. And Draymond Green, Draymond Green with the ball. The Steph's got it now. Steph trying to put the moves on uh, Irving. And Durant with the ball. Durant down to uh, Draymond Green. Steph, I mean Clay, I'm sorry. 
And, and a great rebound by LeBron, and here he goes with his court vision, obviously. Very dangerous when he's in the open court. Beautiful pass, JR for three. Wow. That's just LeBron being LeBron. That is definitely LeBron being LeBron. The king is in the building. And Kevin Durant misses the shot. Clay Thompson, I mean Zaza, I'm sorry, uh, with the with uh, two points. Yeah, that was a great pass by Curry. Obviously, he's known of having tremendous passes in there. You can see it right there. And you got Irving, the ball, and Zaza fell. And a hard foul on, I believe that was uh, Tristan Thompson, who got up ball on him, or actually Kevin Love, and you could clearly see them battling under. Oh, and now here's um, Zaza Pachulia's finish and a beautiful move by him being able to get in the lane and put it down for two. That's right. Steph Curry now, and he's going to dribble it down. He's going to pass it to Zaza. He's going to pass it down to Kevin Durant, and Kevin Durant's got the ball. Kevin Durant's going to go down the middle. He's going to try to score, and he does. And a great move by Durant, able to see the defense and able to get in for the two. 4-3 now. Uh, Cleveland trailing by one. LeBron, down over to Love, it looks like. And there's a foul called. And it seems that – I feel like that uh, during the finals there's going to be a lot of fouls. I think that LeBron might be get fouled a lot because he is such a dominant force in the game. Yeah, but here's he, that beautiful pass from Green to Durant. And, yeah, that's a great pass. And Irving. Over to JR. JR shoots. Score misses. That was actually Kyrie on that shot. Oh, okay. Steph Curry. Curry wow. down to Zah. Over to Draymond and down to Zah, but Zah missed the but shot. Regardless, that was a great pass by Curry to Green, but Pachulia can finish. And. Kevin Durant with the ball. Kevin Durant tries to shoot the floater, but he misses. And yeah, <laughs> LeBron James, LeBron James, a player of his, you know, at his stat, the stats that he has, he's missing a lot of shots in this game, and it's it's very unlikely to see from you know a player that's as good as him, and that is definitely one of the best players in a league, and he's such a dominant force, yeah, and you well, just don't expect this. As LeBron's about to shoot free throws. He's definitely improved on his free throw shooting a ton, shooting 75-plus uh, this season in the playoffs. But the past years, he just has not shoot well from the line, even though his great caliber, he's a great NBA player, one of the best. And LeBron misses that free throw. And now you can see it there that he just can't make that those free throws. And for some reason, he can make crazy threes, but he needs to really improve on those free throws. LeBron is the seventh player in NBA history to play seventh straight NBA finals. And... It's always a lot of pressure, but um, he's, you know, been here seven times, so he's got nothing, you know, he's used to it, so LeBron, he makes that free throw. And Steph Curry with the ball. Curry over to Za, down to Draymond, and a lob straight over. To that was Kevin a Durant. This pass by Draymond Green, finding Durant wide open, and Durant was able to get up and dunk it, and the Warriors lead by two. Kevin Love with the ball makes the shot, and he's saying, I, You know, you just had that amazing play, but I'm good too. So That's a great job by Kevin Love, seeing the defense was off of him and able to make the three. Steph Curry, and the ball is out of bounds. Head out of bounds. And it looks like it's going over to Golden State. Kevin Durant with the ball. Kevin over to – and does not score, sorry. It does score. Clay Thompson with the easy two, and that's a great job by Clay Thompson fighting and able to find the open lane and get inside. 8-7 Warriors. LeBron can't make it, though. Look at LeBron. They're fighting over there, and – Kevin Durant trying to get the ball, but he does not. Ky Kyrie. And that's another great pass. LeBron, with is a, an amazing court vision, able to find Kyrie wide open for the three. Yeah. He is definitely – he's also – not only is he just a great shooter, but he's also a great passer, I believe. LeBron with the ball. 
LeBron and and a flop by Curry. Yeah, flop. And you can see, oh, look at that, Kevin Love trying to draw that foul. And Green's pissed, and that's his second foul. That's just an amazing play by Kevin Love being able to draw the offensive foul. And here it is one more time. is Kevin Love saw Green going full speed and knew that he would have to get in the foul area for, able, for Green to draw the foul. That's already his second foul, only through four and a half. And now Andre Iguodala, who's been definitely a key man for the Warriors in the playoffs and in the finals. And we're going to go to commercial. Thank you very much. I'm Caden Vincent with this NBA Finals Game 1. And, and I'm Noah Jaffe. Thank you very much. Nine miles an hour. Aroldis Chapman with the heat there on Brandon Geyer. Now it's a three and two count. And here it is. High fastball. That'll move the count to three and two. Aroldis Chapman, known for his heat, showed it off right there. Chapman looks on. Rajay Davis is on deck if Brandon Geyer somehow does get on board. Here's a 3-2. That's a line drive. Base hit right center field. Ramirez flying around third. He will score. Brandon Geyer in with an RBI double. He's hyped. And the Indians are only down two. What a swing by Geyer. Hit the ball perfectly right in the right center. And now the Indians fans are alive. Here as Aroldis Chapman gives up a rare run, obviously known. And here it is again, line drive, right center field, and it's 6-4 Indians. You know, what do you think these Cubs fans are thinking right now, Katie? You think they feel they're about to win their first World Series since 1908, and all of a sudden it could be slipping away here in the eighth inning, and the home crowd of the Indians, they are fired up with Rajay Davis coming up. Could he possibly Send this game into extras. Yeah, that was definitely a big swing because instead of a three-run game, it's now a two-run game. It's six to four, and there are the Indians. Here's the pitch. Just a bit outside, 1-0, 100 miles an hour. Rajay Davis is 0 for 3 with the ground out in the six. But what, with the Indians, he's batting 286 in the postseason, so he has that as an advantage. He's done well in the series so far. Davis fly ball, that's a, that'll go out of play, and that'll move the count to one and one. Aroldis Chapman just came in for John Lester, who was pitching superb up until he got into that eighth inning. The Indian fans are looking on as it's one and one. Very intense game right now. Game seven of the World Series. The Cubs obviously in 108 year. The Indians haven't won since 1948. Here's Aroldis Chapman's one one. Swing and a fly ball, back out of play, one and two. Aroldis Chapman was originally on the Cincinnati Reds and then went on the New York, was traded to the New York Yankees on the trade deadline. And somehow he's found his way here on the Chicago Cubs and pitching in game seven of the World Series. Doesn't get any more intenser than this, my f folks. There's Miller who pitched the seventh and eighth inning. There's some Cubs fans, very nerving, and this whole stadium shaking. The, the one, two, just a bit outside, two and two. That was at a near 101 miles an hour. Two and two, Aroldis Chapman, obviously a Cuban. If you look at his shoes, he's currently wearing shoes that have JF and his hat that say JF in honor of Jose Fernandez. Here's a two, two, swinging a ground ball, foul. If Rajay Davis does get a hold of one and hits a home run, the Indians and the Cubs would be tied in Game 7 of the World Series. Rajay Davis, as we said, is 0 for 3 tonight, but he has been doing well in this World Series and the postseason, all in all told. Davis looks in. Geyer, barely, not a lot of lead on second. The 2-2. Two -two. Swing the line, foul down the right field line and that'll stay the count at two and two and davis was just lucky enough to foul that pitch off he had a pitch that he could hit but he fouled it off but a good job of not swinging or at least grounding into any play and staying alive there's another indians fans obviously a lot of people very nervous two and two bottom of the a six four runner on second and this is an intense game folks chapman's certainly only at 13 pitches so far, so he has not thrown a lot of pitches this inning. Here's Davis. Chapman's 2-2. Two -two. Sweet a fly ball! Left field! It is gone! Rajay Davis with the game tying! Two run homer in the bottom of the eighth! And the Indians have tied it! And look at the Indians bench! Jumping like a li little six-year-old as they're obviously excited as Rajay Davis hits a game-tying two-run homer. I'm Caden Vincent saying good night from Cleveland.
Welcome back. I'm Noah Jaffe alongside Kate and Vincent. Uh, we got a lot to talk about, and let's just jump right into it. Jay Ajayi is out two to three weeks with a concussion. Sources say that he definitely could be out longer, but is this gonna, how is this going to interfere with Miami? Well, we don't know yet, but, you know, it's only going to be a few weeks, so he could always have time to recover, and we still have a month left until football season. Yeah, and other teams in that division, do you think anyone's going to race against New England, or is New England just going to run away with that division? Also, we, we don't know. I mean, Tom Brady, with how good he is, he, you know, always has, he can always pull a trick out of his hat. Right. And I think that, you know, he's one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. So I would like to say that they will probably be in the playoffs this season. Right. I mean, I don't think there's any question about being in the playoffs. The question is, how will they get there exactly? Um, but so uh, going back to the JHI thing, you think Miami's going to stay where they are and be okay? Um, well, we'll see. Oh, we got breaking news. Is that... According to our sources, Barry Bonds will have enough vot voters to make the 2018 Hall of Fame. Um, I find that very interesting. As some of you may know, Barry Bonds um, took uh, some performance enhancement drugs, and that's why he was not allowed to be in the Hall of Fame. What do you think about this? Um, you know, like you said about the drugs, about all the home runs that he was on drugs. But, hey, if the people want him, I mean, they voted. So right. if they want him in, I think they should let him right. in. They have no, they, I mean, they don't really have they enough have no proof, proof exactly. that he was taking these performance enhancement drugs when he broke the home run record. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, he did take these performance enhancing drugs, so they think that, you know, he was taking them when he broke the record. Right, absolutely. And again, going on with Barry Bonds, you know, I think that there are a lot of great players, like obviously Hank Aaron's in the home right. run. If he hit the home run leader, then I think he should be too, no matter what. But even right. though he did have drugs, the people want him, and there's not, like you said, not enough proof. So that's our coverage for tonight. All right. And we're going to go to commercials. Thank you very much. I'm Caden Vincent reporting live from Cleveland, Ohio, as the Kyrie Irving buzz continues, as the teams that he has been offered is the Heat, the Wolves, the Knicks, and apparently now the Suns. I just talked to Teron Liu on it, and he, he definitely agrees and says that it's all about the NBA. I'm Caden Vincent reporting live from Cleveland.